So the plan for today is to fix the rattliness of my cables here. They, they still rattle. I've got these Jaguar S-hooks. They don't do much of anything. Uh, I asked you guys on Facebook a while back, said, hey, what should I do about my cables? And I got all kinds of suggestions. And one of the suggestions was to go to Frame Up Bikes in Walnut Creek and have the guys at the bike shop take a look. And uh, I just went down to Frame Up Bikes a couple weeks ago to meet the guys. And if you know this channel, you know I'm always kind of looking for a good local bike shop. So I hope I've found it. Let's go down there and uh, have these guys take a look. All right, we're here. So we got Chris here from Frame Up Bikes, one of the owners. Yo. And so what are we gonna do today? Today we're gonna make your bike quiet. <laughs> I say most trail bikes now, there's so much stuff on the front of these guys that with dropper posts and shifters, brakes or whatever, that there's a lot of cables. So um, here we've started using a little bit of a electrical heat shrink to basically cut all the cables down, put the heat shrink on there and uh, makes the bike nice and quiet and it's a nice clean look. So I think, uh, We've got a good candidate here with all these little uh, cable, cl cable clips. So. Yes, yes. And we were also saying we're going to change some of the lengths, right? Yeah. Like yeah. snip down some of this, make yeah. this. So yeah, let's do it. Exactly. Let's check it cool. out. Let's do it. And a, sh a short side note as I tour the shop here. These guys have been here since August. It's all built out custom. Beautiful. An amazing spot. So since we're actually gonna cut some cables, we'll have to do brake bleeding and fluid yep, yep, and cables yep, exactly, and all that stuff. Exactly, yeah, so we're just gonna Let start the professionals that. handle it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, so we're just gonna start with the disassembly and just basically disconnect the brake lines up here, disconnect the, the shifter so we have the uh, cables exposed so we can cut them down to the correct length um, and put the heat shrink on it, so. Yeah, we just cut the cable right here. Okay. We just get the cable out. Pull it out up here. Oh, there's a kink in it. There it is. <laughs> so we're gonna replace this obviously with a with a whole new cable. So get that out of the way. And they've got them by the by the box. By the spoon. <laughs> Some time to check and see if you need new housing. So you can see that's a little pulled through. The wires so what are you looking way. for? You're looking for basically that inner. To, you want it to be nice and level, just like that. Oh, uh, okay. So nice square edges. So yeah, more cutting here. So now that we've cut that, we'll probably end up cutting it a little bit more. Um, we got to cut the olive and bar box. We got the older aloe. There we go. A little cigar cutter. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the barb? That, I, I heard people mention the barb for brakes before. Yeah. I have not seen it. I don't know what it is. So yeah, these, there's your there's your olive, obviously, the round one, and the barb's the the part that goes inside there, and that's basically it'll it'll thread in into there. Okay. And that controls the flow through. I, I guess both ways in the yes. liner or whatever, and then the olive will end up screwing on to the head there. The head's actually threaded. It's reverse threaded on these. And the red part mounts to the actual brake assembly. The red part works as a crush washer, essentially, and it actually mounts to the to the barb. So oh. you can see that the barb, the head on the barb is actually threaded. So the top part of the, the head there is threaded and these new style of SRAM uh, olives actually thread on there, which is pretty cool. Whereas the older style and the Shimano ones, they literally just sit on the head like that. And then when you when you uh, tighten it down with obviously the stop and the, the part that, that fits okay, into the Okay, that goes here, in the brake, okay. Exactly, that butts up against the olive, just like that. Yes. It pushes it all, holds it in place, so it also ends up crushing the olive a little bit, which, yes. which is what holds okay. it in place. Okay. So. We'll do away with the yeah. clips. <laughs> the old clips. <laughs> Out with the old. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go about where these, and you see obviously where they naturally kind of want to sit here. You don't want to put this like way back here because it's going to do weird stuff to okay. the cables here. So naturally where they sit and where you can kind of hold them together. So right about there is probably where we're going to start our heat shrink. And then we'll come all the way around keeping them together like this. And obviously since you've you've had your setup for a while, this is where, you know, your angles and whatever yes. else with the matchmaker there, this is where your, your, your shifter and your brake are gonna sit. So 
if we were to put the brake line back in like that, you can see obviously that shifter line is obviously about an inch, inch and a half too long there. So we'll snip that off and then that'll dictate our, our hose length before the, before the heat shrink. We'll run it to about there. Same thing as over here. You don't want to go all the way up to the top because it pulls and does weird stuff to the cables. So you do want to keep them kind of at their natural, natural state. And that's a good length, so I would say we can turn the bars yep. around. So if uh, if stuff does happen, <laughs> <laughs> no, never, would never, exactly, um, it won't end up ripping or doing anything weird to the to the shifter cables or brake lines. So now we're going to replace the cable. Ooh, just pull the cable out of here. That is the perfect little tool for that. Right, exactly. Shout out to Craftsman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can never have enough picks in the bike shop. As easy as it came out, it goes right back through the shifter. So now we basically knew where we were gonna be, so we can just measure. So we wanted to go right about there, from about there. We'll measure this <laughs> guy right through here. That's about a foot, about 11 and a half inches. So we got our electrical heat shrink here. Electrical heat shrink, obviously with the brake cables and the uh, and the shifter cable. The shifter shifter housing is four millimeters, and the the brake cable or brake housing is is five millimeters. So pretty much anything with a diameter over ten will work. Um, when you heat it up, it obviously shrinks down. So I think this stuff is uh, it's a little bit bigger than that. I think it's about thirteen or fourteen millimeters that we use, and we just buy it by the spool. We got a huge. 30 meter spool of it from Amazon and nice. we basically just cut it as we need and use it as we need. So yeah, so we'll cut that down to basically right there, 11 and a half. You gotta make sure you put this on before you put it all back together. Because once, <laughs> yes. once you put this on, there's no getting your, your dust covers and your olives and barbs and all the other fun stuff over it, so. So obviously you can see it already looks a whole lot cleaner totally. before we've even heat shrunk it. So now that's on there and now we can put all of our olives and barbs on. We can put our shifter cable back together. Which is super easy. We'll put the end cap on there. So probably the best time to get this done is when you're already brought the bike in for maybe an overhaul or like a, a yearly service type yeah, thing. Exactly, exactly. I mean if you're getting an overhaul or a, or um, one of our tune ups or whatever, so we do a, a level, a couple of different levels of tune-ups, but our, our mid-tier and our, our higher tier tune-ups, um, it's something that we totally include with the trail bikes, um, the suspension and obviously the the, uh, the cable heat shrink stuff here as well. So um, another good times, obviously if you need a brake bleed or whatever, so if we're already bleeding the brake or whatever, then we can just disconnect the, uh, the, uh, the shifter and put it in or vice versa. You need a shifting adjustment or new cables and housing, it's a great time just to pop the brake line and do it Perfect. at the same time. So we got the shifter back together now, so now we can put the brake back together. Um, these guys use a tiny, tiny, tiny little torque. Out of our handy dandy little cup there. And like we said earlier, these guys literally just thread in. So you oh, push wow. them to start and they will just thread in. They take a while because they're very yes. fine thread. You have to in. actually dig it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But they pull themselves in, which is nice. Unlike the Shimano's, where you got to kind of bang them in. They have a little uh -huh. tool to, to press them into the line. Um, this is the important part where you get all your you put all your dust cover and everything yeah. <laughs> else back on now. Because if you put the olive on, then you're uh, you're screwing done. yourself. So the last thing is the olive, which is obviously for these new SRAM ones. It's reverse threaded. Oh, uh, okay. It sits nice and flush, just like that. And then back into there. And now that red piece, the olive and yeah. the barb, you need a new one every time you do something like this? Um, we've talked to a few people at SRAM, and the professional answer is yes. <laughs> um, yes, every time you take the line, because the olive is obviously crushed, um, it's, it's best to replace with a new olive. Um, you don't necessarily have to replace the barb, but it's just a good, a good habit to get into. It's just start from square one. I mean, they're a couple, couple bucks a piece, and 
it's one of those things where, you know, we replace them on every bike. I take them out, even on our own bikes or whatever. We, we do new new olive, new barb, and it gives you that peace of mind. Yes. There's something to be said for that. Always. You know? so, Always. So see, and now it's back together, and I say we can just add some heat to this thing, and it'll, it'll shrink down, and then we can just readjust it at the derailleur, put the cable through, and go back through the shifting, and that's uh, cable number one done. Sweet. A little creme brulee creme, torch. Yeah, creme brulee cooking torch, <laughs> you know? And just add the heat. You could do it with a lighter or matches, but it's a little easier with a torch. Proper tool for the job. Exactly. I end up doing one side, all the way down to the end there. And then we come around the other side and do the same thing, all the way along. And the heat shrink will burn. If you add too much heat to it, it'll actually end up kind of smoldering and you'll end up blowing through it. So yeah, I was saying now you can see obviously how much how much cleaner the routing is. Fantastic. Yeah. There's not really much of a science to this one yeah. as there is on the yeah. other side, you know? So I say we're just gonna go for a little bit right about there. There's still a good loop in the brake. Yep. It's not obviously so not restrictive. Not restrictive like that or whatever. So let me say we'll put those in there, match these guys up, and we'll go for something about that long. I think I think that'll look nice. Perfect. So I think, well, like I said, we don't want it obviously way up here because you can see how it kinks the yes. cable. So we'll let it kind of sit there where it wants to sit naturally, and then just add a little heat to it. And Creme brulee torch. <laughs> and now you can see. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Obviously, they touch a little bit, but they're not going to sit here and, and bounce against yeah. each other the whole time. And they'll they'll settle as well. They'll figure out where they want to be and where yes. they're happy. So, whole lot cleaner, whole yeah. lot quieter, and fantastic. Yeah. Open that guy up, and basically as we pull now, you can see all the little bit of air coming out. And like I said, we're just literally purging the system here. It's very simple with these new brakes, where we don't have to bleed the whole line or anything at the caliper. I'm kind of surprised it's not all gunky and black, the fluid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's great, i say, I mean, the. You definitely need to change your fluid probably once every year, year and a half. If you're riding an absurd amount, then to each their own, you know, every six to eight months or whatever. But it's good to do it with that annual annual tune-up or annual service. Yeah. Just make sure you've got fresh, fresh brake fluid for the year because... I mean, the cleaner you keep it, it's just like changing the oil in your car. You yep. know, the cleaner, the cleaner that oil is, the cleaner that fluid is, the, the easier it is for everything else to do its job. Mm -hmm. It won't disintegrate or, or fall apart on you as fast. And then I just put this here to stop it from leaking down the, down the line. When you take the syringe off, usually there's a little bit of excess that comes out of there. Yes. So, as you can see, there it goes. And in theory... <laughs> we have a break again. <laughs> yeah, to the lever. Oh no. <laughs> bar, yeah. Now we're on to the other side. A lot more bubbles in this one, I think. Yeah, a little bit more bubbles on this guy. Yeah, so those feel pretty even there. Good. good. So the reverb has its own yep, fluid, the right? It's has like its specific. Own. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Keep it at that. We won't go too technical <laughs> or whatever. But. It's the same thing. We don't need a ton of fluid to do this because there's not a ton of air in there. You want to make the speed all the way slow, so it's just a T25 adjustment there. Okay. And that's the opposite way of the arrow as well. So um, with the reverbs, as you know, you can make them fa come up faster and slower. It's always best to bleed it in the slow position. Yes. And then there's just a three millimeter Allen in here for the bleed port to open the bleed port up. Here we come. <laughs> there it goes. And in theory, nice. a little bit of air coming out. Exactly, perfect. <laughs> so this guy pulls out of here. There we go. And then the bleed screw back in. Try that all the way slow. Because you know if your reverb works all the way slow, it's definitely going to work all yeah. the way fast. 
moment of truth, see if we did something right. And that coming up. So now we can obviously adjust the speed. And we can go a little bit towards that plus now on, yeah. the, on the adjustment. It's the easy part. And obviously a whole lot faster. You hear Sweet. Click at the top of the stroke, <laughs> which is a good sound from a reverb. <laughs> <laughs> Basically readjust your controls back to where they were. And that's pretty much it. Awesome. Right. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, so much nicer. So I think that's going to work out really, really well. I was just riding in the parking lot, slamming the hell out of the bike, and it sounded sweet. I, I heard nothing. Probably broke the bike, but <laughs> it, it'll, it's fine. It'll be fine. So now I'm gonna head back home. I'm gonna do the Sonya Looney podcast again. This time is kind of a sidekick, so that'll be fun. I've got uh, these pain and pleasure gray shirts. Still a couple, still a couple of them on Worldwide Cyclery right now. Not many left. Check them out. Mm -hmm. Christmas, little holiday gift thing. And then, starting Friday, my Moab videos start. And then on Wednesday, I'm gonna have a big old Spain compilation. So I think that'll be kind of a fun video. I've never done a video like that, but it's more than an hour of riding. So you guys will see, hope you like it. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll see you on the trail.